Welcome again to A Cup of Joe with, with Joe. Uh, today we're going to talk about air tightness. Uh, how low can you go? Um, where did these air change per hour numbers come from? And what, what, did, what, what, what did they mean? Um, well, the, the building codes in the early 2000s in the United States um, called for seven air changes per hour at, at a test pressure of 50 pascals. Um, that is a pretty incredibly leaky uh, building. Um, the, the code requirements today are five air changes per hour at 50 pascals uh, in um, hot climates and three air changes per hour at 50 pascals in, in cold climates. And um, where those numbers come from actually, actually came from, uh, from, from, from me in the Building America program. In the, late, in the early 1990s, uh, there were an insane amount of comfort complaints coming out of Chicago and uh, Minneapolis. Um, Detroit, uh, cold climates and um, freezing pipes, um, just warranty calls. And we got involved with three of the largest production home builders in Chicago and we basically said, look, get rid of the big holes behind your bathtubs, uh, fireplaces on exterior walls where the second floor is cantilevered over the first floor, um, your garage to house connection, especially if you've got a bedroom over the garage. And we came up with a whole series of draft stops. And just, you know, we just got rid of the big holes. And that evolved into the thermal bypass checklist. And we basically were able to show the production builders that by getting rid of the big holes easily, they could lower their typical air changes, which were at the time six to eight air changes per hour at 50 pascals to less than three. So the fact that three of the top 10 production home builders systematically, regularly, reliably in Chicago got below three air changes per hour at 50 pascals paved the way for the code change that took place, <laughs> wait for it, almost 15 years later. So the home builders were not uncomfortable with um, that number. It was simply based on getting rid of the big holes. That's where the three came from. Uh, well, why in the South is it five? Well, <laughs> the South doesn't have basements. Uh, basements were invented by the building science gods for a place to put ductwork and furnaces. Um, we don't have basements in the South, so the furnaces and ductwork and actually air conditioners are put in attics, and the attics are vented. And um, there's no way that you could get reliably to three air changes per hour at 50 pascals with a slab on grade home in Texas or in Florida or in Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi with having your ductwork and air handler located in an vented attic, hence five. And to get to five requires an enormous amount of effort. Um, so the five comes from slab on grade houses with ductwork in, in, in attics, and the, the three comes from houses with basements with no ductwork in vented attics, the ductwork and mechanical systems inside. Well, all right. Um, in Canada, they came up with the R2000 program, which is 1.5 air changes per hour at 50 pascals. Where did that number come from? <laughs> it came from me. Yeah, my fault. Um, actually, it came as a compromise. There are a bunch of really spectacular builders in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan that built a parade of homes. Um, and they got, they built 10 houses in 1981, 1980-81 that were 
all less than one air change per hour at 50 pascals, but they were square boxes with no real interesting detailing, and they got them unbelievably tight. Well, I was in charge of developing the R2000 program technical specs and, and manage it, and I had no idea what what that meant, and I figured I saw how difficult it was to get that level of tightness, and I simply multiplied that and said two. I said, if the folks in Saskatchewan are asking for one, I'm going to make it two and see what happens. Well, the compromise was halfway between one and two is 1.5. <laughs> so the 1.5 came out of 10 houses built in Saskatchewan where, where that were all less than one, and I multiplied that by two because I was unsure of what, what could be done. Well, it turned out that 1.5 turned out to be a number that didn't make sense for a, a nation like Canada at the time. We then went and built a whole bunch of houses, uh, test houses, and felt that I felt that 1.5 is not achievable, and I started recommending three air changes per hour at 50 pascals. This was before the work that we did, or the work that I did, and others in Chicago in the early 1990s. And it turned out that three air changes per hour at 50 pascals was more or less what the Swedish code called for at, at the time. So 1.5 didn't make sense because we didn't have the technology at the time to reliably, to reliably get there. And we have the technology today, but we didn't have it then. So R2000 was a boutique program. Not a lot of houses got actually constructed. Uh, three air changes per hour by having the air tightness go on the outside of the building rather than the inside and getting rid of the big holes made it easy to get to three, hence the current code requirement. Now, with the technology we have available, could we go to 1.5 or to 3 in, or, or 1? The answer is yes. With uh, fully adhered membranes on the outside or integral sheathing, with the stuff that we know how to do today, absolutely we could reliably get to, to 1. Well, where did Passive House come from with the 0.6? Don't get me going there. There's no test technical justification for the 0.6. It made absolutely no sense whatsoever. I think they just wanted to be able to say that it was more or less half of what the best Canadians could do in the 1980s. I have, you know, there's no reason to get that tight. Now, um, is there a big difference in performance between one air change per hour at 50 pascals and three air changes per hour at 50 pascals? The answer is. No, infiltration-wise, there isn't. And it makes no sense if you're then going to overventilate your house. The ventilation rate dominates the energy and doesn't make it, doesn't, it makes no sense to go from three to one from an energy perspective if you then overventilate your house. Now, on the other hand, that one air change per hour at 50 pascals makes it real easy for you to control the pressure differentials between the inside and the outside. And that is the main justification in my mind for wanting to build that type. But it comes with a penalty. Um, large air consuming appliances need to get air from somewhere and so you no longer can install a regular exhaust fan that works because the air has to come from somewhere. So you have to have balanced ventilation. If you're going to put in a kitchen range hood, you're going to have to put an interlocked makeup air system. If you have a fireplace, you're going to have to open your windows. That, well, that, saves, that doesn't save energy. Well, the fireplace was never saving, about saving energy. It was about romance. It had nothing to do with energy. You want romance, you want a real fire, open your damn window. Um, so where are we? Um, Three is the code up north because it gets rid of big holes and we have basements. Five is the code right now because they don't have basements. The ductwork is in the attic. I didn't mention this earlier, but if you have a, an unvented conditioned attic, it's real easy to get to three because now your ductwork is inside. When you start getting below three air changes per hour at 50 pascals, 
Um, you now have make up air concerns. You're going to have to provide some make up air interlock for your kitchen range hood. Clothes dryers, where are you going to get 200 CFM? You're going to have to go to condensing sealed uh, clothes dryers. Balanced ventilation with heat recovery is the only way to go. And uh, one, if I had my way, I'd pick one. One is the lonely number, it's a number one, and that's where we should all end up, and we have the technology today to, to get to it. It's not so much from an energy perspective, but it's a way of controlling pressures, and pressures have a great deal to do with controlling the indoor environment from an air quality perspective. And with that, we'll see you again.